What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So today we're going to get a little more in-depth with an extension that allows you to create bevels and rounded edges in SketchUp. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I've done an overview of this, this extension in the past, and I'll link to that both uh, up above and also in the notes below. But I wanted to talk a little bit about um, Round Corner. And Round Corner is an extension that allows you to create beveled and rounded edges. Um, it's a free extension from Fredo6 who's a developer that creates a lot of different extensions. And uh, you can download it from the SketchUp extension warehouse. I'll try to link to that in the notes below. Um, you do need to note that as with all the extensions from Fredo 6, you're going to need to install uh, his library. Uh, it's called libfredo from the extension warehouse as well for it to work. So, and this is something that you can find just by going to the extension warehouse and just searching for round corner. So once you get Round Corner installed, what it's going to do is it's going to give you this little uh, this little toolbar called Round Corner, um, and you can see it's got three different options in here. And basically, what it does is it can take an object, like let's say I just have a little box down here. I'll go ahead and delete out my default model. Um, let's say I have an object like this one. I can select the object, I can activate Round Corner, and I can set an offset, and it'll round all the corners by that offset. So you can see how it took this object and it rounded the whole thing off. So, and there's a lot of different functions that you can use, or a lot of different things you can do with this. And uh, it's super easy to use. Um, it's a really great extension. I recommend you go up, play around with it. So, and not only can you select an entire object and round it off, but you can also activate the tools and you can round off individual edges. So like let's say I wanted to round off these two edges, I would just be able to click on those and round those off. Or you can round off just faces. So if I clicked on this front face, it would round off just this front face and it indicates really easily what you're rounding off. So I could round off just that front edge. So I just wanted to go through some of the options that come along with this. So what we're gonna do is we'll go ahead and make three copies of this object. And what, what I'll do first is I'll just show you the difference between these three, three objects, or these three options. So it has three options. There's round corners, there's sharp corners, and there's bevel edges. And those all come up with a slightly different result. So let's start with round corner. So when I run round corner, um, I'll turn all of the geometry it creates on so you can see what it's doing. Round corner will go in and it'll round off all your different edges. And you can see what the geometry looks like on these corners. So that's what round corner is going to create. And then sharp corner, if you run that one, you can see how the difference between round corner and sharp corner is the way that it handles the corners. So it rounds everything off the same on the edges, but you see how these corners come to a point, while these corners are all kind of rounded off. So that's the difference between round corner and sharp corner. Along these edges, it creates kind of the same type um, type of geometry and then it handles the corners differently and then bevel will come in and it'll allow you to set this and bevel will actually come in here and just create a single beveled edge so you can see how this just took this and it just created it's probably a 45 degree cut based on whatever my offset is. So you can see how that, instead of creating a whole bunch of different geometry, will just kind of uh, create a 45 degree bevel around the edge. So that in general is the difference between the three tools. So now let's talk about some of the options that are available in this. So, and we'll start with round corner itself. So with round corner itself, when you activate it, um, I'm, I'm just going to focus on some of the big things here. The big things are you can set your offset. So you can see how if I click on this top face and I set my offset to 2 inches instead of 4 inches, it'll create a smaller round on this top. Or if I make this bigger, then it'll give me a 6 inch offset. And one of the things that I want to note on this is um, round corner will give you, give you kind of an error message 
if uh, you have overlapping rounds on here. So like for example, I set this to six inches. Well, you can see how I get this red notification. That means that my rounds are overlapping. So um, if you offset these too far, then you start getting weird results because it's trying to offset this one by six inches and this one by six inches and it doesn't necessarily work. So um, that's one nice thing is it kind of looks out for you. So you can see how if I set that to four inches, then that red that red error message goes away. So you can set that. You can also change the number of segments that this creates. So like right now, this is set to six segments. So when I round this off, that'll round, this will round this off to a six segment curve. So, and that means if you come in here and you look at this, this isn't a smooth curve, it's just made up of six different segments. Well, if I come in here and I do the same thing and I set this to 24 segments, and then run it. You can see how this creates a lot smoother curve because there's a lot more segments in here. But the trade-off when you do this is you're creating a lot more geometry. So you need to be kind of aware of what you're trying to create. Like if you're just creating a single table model, probably no big deal. You can smooth this off as much as you want to. But if you're creating a whole bunch of different things in a model, you may want to think about reducing this segment count. So just, just to kind of do some... Uh, geometry management in your model to keep it running quickly. The other thing I want to talk about is your edge properties. So I turned off hidden and smooth geometry just to show you the geometry this creates. You see how this has a whole bunch of lines. And if you recall, we've talked in the past about hiding geometry. So you can use the erase tool and hold the shift key to hide this geometry. So it's still in here. Um, you can see how if I click on these, then um, each one of these individual faces is showing up. And if I turn on hidden geometry, then those will show up as hidden lines. And they're even marked as hidden in the entity info. So you could unhide those by shift clicking on those and unchecking the hide box. But you can set this to create hidden geometry and also smooth geometry. And if you remember, smooth just has to do with uh, the way that SketchUp kind of merges the faces together in here to make a face look smooth. So I can set the borders and the corners and all my inner edges to softened and smooth. And now if I look at this, this will show up as more of a smooth face in here. And uh, sometimes what you may want to do is you may want to turn hidden geometry on just while you're working with this. Because otherwise I find when everything's kind of smooth that all kind of merges together and you've just got kind of this white blob in here. And it's really difficult to tell what this actually is. So you could do that. You could also not smooth these and just leave them. You could just leave them as hidden by checking these boxes. So you can see how that's a little rougher in here. So you, you can adjust all those different things in, in order to kind of get the edges that you want. And then sharp corner, you're gonna have the same set of options. The only thing that's changing on this one, like I said before, is the way it handles the corners. So your corners are gonna come to more of a point. So in, in this case, this is only gonna happen anyway if you have intersecting faces on the corners. So you can see how if I just set this on the top, so if it's just going around the top of this object around here, then your edges get rounded off the same way. The way this is different is if you have multiple different edges that you're rounding off, then just the way that these all come together is gonna to be different, but everything else is pretty similar. So you can still set your hidden lines, your, your softened lines, your smooth faces, all that different kind of stuff. So, and then bevel, bevel is probably the simplest in that all you really do is you just set your offset and you go and it's gonna bevel that off. And it's got the same set of options where you can uh, set your borders and corners to hidden if you want to. Um, I actually find that I don't really like that on bevel because I find it just a little bit different. Again, you get this kind of like featureless blob feeling in here. Um, you know, So that's kind of a personal preference thing, but you can definitely set those to hidden if you want to. So and then the other thing I wanna talk about is the way that this tool allows you to handle the way that objects intersect. So like for example, if I have an object that steps twice, 
kind of like this one, one of the cool things about this is I could actually come in here with round corner, select this edge, set my borders and my corners, my hidden or my inner edges all to hidden, and then run this, and this will actually create a round corner between these two objects. So you can use this to kind of smooth the difference between two objects. And you could also do this on each individual edge. So if you wanted to, you could round all of those off really quickly and really easily. So this is a really great extension for doing cool things like that. And this will work with more complex shapes as well. So if I was to come in here and I wanted to do all of these edges, I would just click on these and you can see how that'll allow you to round this whole thing off um, to kind of merge these two shapes together. So it really gives you a lot of different uh, functionality. So, and then you could also use this, like if you're doing some woodworking or something like that, you could use this to round off like a table edge. So if you had like a top face up here and you wanted to round that off or you wanted to bevel it, you could come in here and you could just set like a quarter inch bevel around this edge to really quickly kind of bevel something off to give it a little more detailed look. So, and you could do the same thing with the rounding. You could come in here and you could do a quarter inch round, set it to the top and you could round this off instead of creating the bevel. So, and then the other thing you could do if you wanted to create some real simple base is you could probably do something like this where you could draw a rectangle You could offset it out. You could extrude it up. And then you could just select these four edges and set your offset to something like an inch or maybe three quarters of an inch. Click and that would give you a real easy rounded piece of base here at the bottom. So like I said, a lot of different options with this particular extension. I really like this one. Um, it's free, so you definitely should uh, go download it and check it out. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Is this an extension you could see yourself using? Uh, what, do you, what do you think some good uses for this would be? Uh, I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider visiting my support me page on my website. That's that's the sketchupessentials.com slash support. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.